We should not allow the world and its culture to drag us down to its level of immaturity. No, you were not created to fit in. You were created to stand out, to let your light shine, no matter how dark it is around us. Grace and peace to you all in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. My name is Christina and it is the amazing grace of God that I get to share with you from the living word of God. Yes, the psalmist made it clear in Psalm 119 and verse 105 that the word of God is a lamp for our feet and a light for our path. Are you walking in darkness today, without direction, wondering what the future may hold for you? I want to encourage you that if you take God's word to heart right now and truly make it a part of you, it will, by its very nature, change you. It will carry you out of darkness and into his marvellous light. And you will find yourself acting with God. So today, we are going to start by reading from the book of Isaiah, chapter 60. Have you got your Bible with you there at home? Oh, I can see some people have their Bibles with them. Can I see your Holy Bible? To God be the glory. So, turn with me to Isaiah, chapter 60. And let's read from verse 1. It says, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. See, darkness covers the earth, and thick darkness is over the peoples. But the Lord rises upon you, and his glory appears over you. You see, Isaiah was making clear here that the people of God are distinctly different from the people of the world, as different as day and night, dark and light. Therefore, as Christians, we should not sympathize with sin or downplay darkness and yet claim to be people of the light. No, as Apostle Paul admonishes us in 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 14, we should not allow the light of God within us to diminish because we are dabbling in darkness through mismatched alliances. For what does righteousness have in common with rebellion? Or morality with carnality? If we are a Christian, we have been called out of darkness into his marvellous light, as it says in 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 9. This will take us to the title of the message today. We are not here to get used to the dark, but to shine as light. Tell somebody next to you, we are not here to get used to the dark, but to shine as light. Who here today is ready to arise and shine? For God's light has come. Hallelujah. Thank you for your faith. Yes, Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5, verse 14 to 16, you are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good work. But why? To glorify who? For your own glory? No, for the glory of God. To glorify your Father in heaven. You see, We cannot be the light of the world on our own. We have no integrity of our own. We have no righteousness of our own. 
But Jesus Christ is the light of the world. And as he said in John chapter 8 and verse 12, he who walks with me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. So just as the moon has no light of its own, but reflects the sun, so we reflect the light of Jesus Christ through our relationship with him. Because the main thing, people of God, about Christianity, it's not the work we do, but it's the relationship that we maintain and the atmosphere that is produced by that relationship. What atmosphere are you creating? Is your relationship with God shining a light in this dark world? Or are you blending into the world around you without even noticing it? You see, the world can be a pretty dark place. And if we are not careful, we can allow the darkness on the outside to influence us. We allow the standards to slip a bit, our integrity to fail. As the book of Song of Solomon says, catch the little foxes, for it's the little foxes that spoil the vine. This can look like our relationship with God going lukewarm as we begin to focus on what the world says instead of the light of God's word. This can look like growing weary in doing good or allowing ourselves to fall into sin. Have you ever experienced a situation where you have started a job or you've been working, maybe you're cooking a meal, or maybe you're sitting there working on your laptop, and suddenly you notice that the sun is going down. But you didn't quite realize how dark it was until somebody switched the light on, and you realize, wow, I'm sitting in darkness. This is what can happen. Slowly but surely, we can find ourselves getting used to darkness if we are not careful until God's word is illuminated in our lives and we see ourselves clearly. We understand God's word and how to apply it to our daily lives. You see, it says in Romans chapter 12 and verse 2, do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world because the world has a very dark pattern which is against God's will and God's word. Do not conform, therefore, to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind through God's word. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is for your life. His good, pleasing and perfect will. Another version says, do not become so well acquainted to your culture that you fit into it without even realizing it. We should not allow the world and its culture to drag us down to its level of immaturity. No, you were not created to fit in. You were created to stand out, to let your light shine, no matter how dark it is around us. So we're going to have a look today at the case of Ruth, who let her light shine among men even though she lived in a time of great darkness. If you turn in your Bibles to Ruth chapter 1, we see how the story of Ruth was set in the times when the judges ruled and everyone did as they seemed fit. People lived for themselves. It was a very lawless time. And there was very few people who showed the kind of integrity that Ruth showed. So in the first chapter of Ruth, we see a man called Elimelech and his wife Naomi. And there is a famine in Bethlehem. So with their two sons, they go to the land of Moab, Israel's ancient enemy. And they live there for 10 years and tragedy strikes as the father of the family dies, leaving Naomi a widow. So the two sons marry Moabite women. One who is Ruth, the other one who is Orpah. But then tragedy strikes again, and those sons also die, leaving both Naomi, Ruth, 
and Orpah, not only widows, but also childless. So Naomi has no reason to stay where she is, and she decides to go back home to Bethlehem. So she urges her daughters-in-law, saying, go back to your people, go back to your parents, go back to your gods, and readjust yourself to your culture, because I don't have anything to offer you. Let's see what Naomi said to Ruth and Orpah in Ruth chapter 1 and verse 11. Naomi said, return home, my daughters. Why would you come with me? Am I going to have any more sons who could become your husbands? Return home, my daughters. I am too old to have another husband. Even if I thought there was still hope for me, even if I had a husband tonight and gave birth to sons, would you wait until they grew up? Would you remain unmarried for them? No, my daughters. So Orpah agrees and returns home. But Ruth remains loyal. See, we have two women here in pretty much the same situation, but they choose very separate paths. Orpah goes down that familiar road back to her people, back to her gods, and readjusts herself to her culture. And that's the last we hear of Orpah. But Ruth chooses the selfless way. Ruth walks down the path of faith, humility and love. She doesn't mind the fact that she will have to leave her biological family to follow Naomi. She was willing to give up her culture, the security of her home, It didn't matter to her whether she was ever going to have a husband or children. Her love for Naomi cut across the barriers of age, culture and ethnicity. And she said to Naomi, I am not following you for what I can get. Because while the world may have alliances for selfish and classic and material reasons, I am not like the people of the world. I choose to let my light shine because I am not here for what I can get. I am here for what I can give. Let's see what Ruth said in Ruth chapter 1 and verse 16. But Ruth replied, Don't urge me to leave you or turn back from you. Where you go, I will go. And where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people and your God will be my God. Wow, that was a determined statement there. And as we know, that statement was tested as Naomi continued to urge her, but Naomi understood that she was serious. So Naomi and Ruth therefore move back to the land of Bethlehem. But there was a further test in that Naomi initially did not seem all that appreciative of Ruth. Yes, Ruth was determined to let her light shine, even though it was not convenient. But at the same time, initially, Naomi went back to Bethlehem, overwhelmed by grief and her sorrow, that she could not see the benefit and the blessing that she had in Ruth. You see, she went back to the land of Bethlehem, and after 10 years, people were like, oh, is that Naomi? They were eager to know if it really was her. And she said to them, In verse 20, don't call me Naomi, which means pleasantness. She said, call me Mara, which means bitterness. Because the Almighty has made my life very bitter, I went away full, but the Lord has brought me back empty. Why call me Naomi? The Lord has afflicted me. The Almighty has brought misfortune upon me. You see, I think if Ruth was like the people of today, she would have been tempted to be quite offended by that statement. If she were like the people of today, she may have said to Naomi, hey, why are you calling yourself empty and bitter? Have I not just given up my security, my home, my culture, my people to come and look after you? I am offended. But Ruth never did that. 
Because while the world today serves to be seen, cares to be compensated and mentors for that public mention and gets discouraged when they don't hear that shallow admiration from men. Ruth continued to love without expectation. She continued to do it for God's sake. She was loving God and she was serving Naomi without expecting any appreciation or reward. But I just want to take a moment to ask you a question today. Are you one like Naomi, who has allowed your situation to define you? Are you facing loss? It may not be widowhood. It may be sickness. It may be barrenness. It may be poverty. You might have experienced one trouble or the other. And have you allowed that situation to define you? Have you now decided that that is it, that there is no hope, that there is no future? Have you become so overwhelmed by your situation that you can't even see the blessing of God that is right beside you in your situation? You see, Ruth understood the principle laid out in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 13 that says, God is faithful. He will not allow your temptation to overcome you, but he will find a way out. So while Naomi was bitter and overcome by her situation, Ruth chose to think about the way that God was preparing for her. She said, well, I am young, I am healthy. As long as I have breath in my lungs, God still has a purpose for me. God still has a plan for my life. I may be a foreign widow who is likely to face xenophobia or abuse or neglect, but that doesn't matter because God is with me. He is my strength. He is my defender. He is the father to the fatherless. He is the defender of the widows and he sets the lonely in families. So I shall not fear for God is with me. And she went out and started to do what she could do, which was to work and glean in the fields. And as she took that step of faith to go and work in the fields and did what she could do, God did what only he could do. Now, I want to ask you today, you might be here with one problem or the other, but do you know you have a part to play? It's not all up to God. And certainly, it's not all up to you. It takes your willingness and God's ability to bring about that change you are looking for today. You too need to step into faith and step out of your situation and take God at his word. And when you do, you will start to see God will challenge and change you and bring you into his good, perfect and pleasing will. So Ruth goes out into the field by faith and starts to glean. And after that, it sets off a bunch of things that just so happened. God was working all things together for her good. Because as she walked out into the field, God was guiding her steps into a field of a man named Boaz, who just so happened to be a wealthy man. But not only that, happened to be extremely generous and a man of noble character. And he just so happened to show up on that field when she had arrived and noticed her. And he just happened to be a relative of Naomi and their kinsman redeemer. And God had just so happened arranged and designed it that Boaz would be used by God to rescue and redeem this family, that she would marry him and that they would have a child together who would be the grandfather of David in the lineage of Jesus Christ. What an awesome God. Ruth was on the outside at rock bottom. But she played her part and the unseen hand of God intervened in her affairs. So what is your situation today? I want to tell you that if you approach God's word today with faith and belief, God will direct your path. He will take you from where you are now to where he wants you to be. 
And I want us to learn a lesson from Ruth's attitude as she comes into this blessing. So when she just so happens to meet Boaz on that field, he starts to offer her protection, generosity, and provides for her needs. And let's see what Ruth said in Ruth chapter 2 and verse 10. So at this, she bowed down with her face to the ground. She asked him, why have I found such favour in your eyes that you notice me, a foreigner? And then in verse 11, Boaz replied, I have been told all about what you have done for your mother-in-law since the death of your husband, how you left your father and mother and your homeland and came to live with the people you did not know before. May the Lord repay you for what you have done. May you be richly rewarded by the Lord, the God of Israel, under whose wings you have come to take refuge. You see, Ruth expressed an acknowledgement that she did not deserve that blessing or even expect it. Because Ruth was sowing to the Spirit without expecting material reward. She was saying, why do you notice me, a foreigner? And I think the question today is, how are we coming into God's presence? Many times we come into God's presence, naming and claiming blessing, asking God for this or that, before even thanking him and humbly recognizing that we are undeserving of God's mercy and favor. But then Boaz tells her, I am not looking at your outward qualities. I see that you are a woman of noble character because it was reported to him all the hard work that she had done because she was not working for money alone but for a good name. And that's what God does. He does not consider our background or our past before blessing us and calling us into a relationship with him. Ruth then returns home to her mother-in-law Naomi with all this blessing, with all this grain. And then Naomi has joy knowing that God is working all things together for their good. So let's see what happened next in Ruth chapter 3 and verse 1. One day, Ruth's mother-in-law, Naomi, said to her, My daughter, I must find a home for you where you will be well provided for. Now Boaz, whose women you have worked, is a relative of ours. Tonight he will be winnowing barley on the threshing floor. Wash Put on perfume and get dressed in your best clothes. Then go down to the threshing floor, but don't let him know that you are there until he has finished eating and drinking. You see, there was a cultural practice in Israel at the time that if a woman was a widow and she had property, then it was possible for a near relative to acquire the property at a wonderful price and support the family. So this was the plan that was being made. But when we read Naomi's instruction to Ruth, we may think that Naomi was telling her to look beautiful on the outside. But you see, the significance of this action was that Naomi was telling Ruth, take off your widow's clothes. Those clothes that represented her loss, her bitterness, the pain of the past. She was saying, Ruth, take off those widow's clothes and put on your best clothes because God is about to do a new thing in your life. Because she knew she cannot build her future around her past. She was saying, wash off those ashes because the Lord is about to give you a crown of beauty. She was saying, put on your best perfume. In other words, put on the oil of gladness instead of mourning and take off that spirit of despair and put on that garment of praise. People of God, who is ready to put on a garment of praise right now because you know that God is about to intervene in your situation? You do not have to wait for the prayer to happen before you say thank you to God because faith acts now, faith believes now and faith receives now. If you are a man or woman of faith, you can start to say thank you, Jesus, right now. You can put off the old man. You can put off that garment of disappointment, the pain of the past, and start to put on a garment of praise. Can I see someone putting on that garment of praise by faith right now? Come on, put on that garment of praise right now. 
put on that garment of praise. Give the Lord the praise for what he is about to do because your past is over. Victory is yours in Christ Jesus. He does not consider your past to determine your future. Finally, Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 22 says, You were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires and to be made new in the attitude of your minds and to put on the new self created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. As Ruth was ready to give up her land, to give up her gods and follow the direction of God's plan for her life, so she was planting seeds that would be multiplied back to her in God's way and in God's time. Are you ready to give up that old life? Are you ready to stop that sin that's holding you back? Are you ready to surrender that bad habit, that addiction? Because if you are, Jesus Christ is ready to receive you right now. So the book of Ruth encourages us that we should let our light shine even when it's not convenient or no matter how dark it is around us. It encourages us to let our light shine even when we don't seem to gain any appreciation. We should let our light shine for God's sake because God is the rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Remember, God does not consider our past to determine our future. He sees our hearts and he sees our faith. Right now, surrender yourself to the Lord. Open your heart to God's faith. Open your heart to his Holy Spirit and allow him, as he did for Ruth, to take you from where you are right now to where he wants you to be, right in the centre of his will, his good pleasing and perfect will. In Jesus' name, amen.